Hi, I'm Professor Afshar at Glendale Community College. This is Physics 101, Lecture 3. In this lecture, we'll discuss mass density. This topic is covered in Chapter 1 of our textbook by Surway and Jouet. Mass density is an important concept in physics and chemistry and many other uh, scientific disciplines. Generally speaking, mass density describes the amount of mass in a given region of space. When we talk about the amount of mass, what we're really talking about is kilograms. We measure the amount of mass that a substance or an object or a body has in kilograms. When we talk about a region of space, what we're talking about is something that is measured in cubic meters or square meters or meters depending on the number of dimensions that the object occupies. For example, we might be talking about the mass density of this dough here. And as I look at this dough, I can see that this dough has some length, it has some width, and it has some height. So it occupies three dimensions of space. In that case, if, you, if I want to quantify the region of space occupied by this dough, I have to measure that region in cubic meters. On the other hand, if I'm talking about a piece of paper, the region of space occupied by this paper is really an area which is measured in square meters. To be sure, the paper has some thickness, but that thickness is insignificant or negligible compared to the length and width of this piece of paper. If you wanted to specify the size of this paper, you would probably ignore its thickness and say something like this piece of paper is 10 centimeters by 30 centimeters long. So what you're doing is you're specifying the region of space occupied by this piece of paper in units of area, which is meter squared. On the other hand, if you're talking about a rope or a thread or a cable, usually the thing that's important is the length of that thread or rope or cable. The thickness of it isn't that important. Sure, it has a certain amount of thickness, but compared to the length of it is quite negligible. In that case, the region of space that's occupied by this piece of thread here is specified in meters. So what this means is that there are really three different types of mass density. People sometimes forget to specify which type they're talking about, but if you look at the units that they're using, you'll see what they mean. If you want to talk about the amount of mass that this dough has and the region of space that it occupies, you would talk about volume mass density and you would specify that quantity in kilograms per cubic meter. So the kilogram is the amount of mass and the cubic meter is the volume of the region that it occupies. On the other hand, if you want to talk about a piece of paper, what you really want to talk about is the area mass density, which is specified in kilograms per square meter. Whereas if you want to talk about this string here, what you really want to talk about is the length mass density, which is the kilograms of string per one unit of length per meter of the string. The concept of mass density is important because it allows us to figure out the total mass of an object whether it's some dough or a piece of paper or a length of string. To calculate the mass, we need to know what kind of a mass distribution we have. If it's a one-dimensional mass distribution, like the string, then what we have is something for which only the length is important, and we can calculate the mass of that object, like this uh, piece of rope or string or maybe a thin rod, by integrating the length mass density along the length of the object. So here the Greek letter lambda denotes length mass density. It's something that would be measured in kilograms per meter. It's describing how much mass there is per unit length. This is describing essentially a one dimensional mass distribution. If the object that you're trying to describe the object whose mass you want to calculate happens to be a string laid down along the x-axis, then you can replace dl with dx, as in a small element of the length of this thing along the x-axis. 
And if lambda happens to be constant, so that the density of the string does not change from one point to another, you can bring that constant out, and then when you have an integral of dx, you just get x. You plug in the limits of integration from 0 to L, where that's the length of the rope or string, and what you find is that mass is equal to lambda times L. Sometimes people write this a little bit differently. Sometimes people write this formula by saying that lambda is equal to mass divided by length. But this, of course, is really the same formula we have found here. Note, however, that this formula is valid only when you have a uniform mass density. In other words, it's valid only when lambda is a constant so that we can bring it out of the integral. If lambda is not a constant, if we have a piece of string whose thickness is changing or the material of which it's made is changing along its length, then we must perform the integral. You can also talk about the two-dimensional mass distribution, something that has a length and a width, like the piece of paper we were discussing. In that case, if you want to calculate the mass of the two-dimensional mass distribution, you integrate sigma with respect to area. Sigma here is the area mass density. It's measured in units of kilogram per square meter. And dA is simply an element of area. It's a piece of the area of this object, for example, this piece of paper that we want to talk about. If the area mass density is uniform, in other words, if it's constant, and the piece of paper is laid down, let's say, um, along the x and y axes, then you can say that area is basically length times width, so x times y. But if we're talking about elements of area, then we can write dA as dx dy. And if sigma is constant, then we can bring it out of the integral. And then the sum of the area elements simply gives you area. So you find that the mass of the object is equal to its area mass density times its total area. This formula also is often written a little bit differently. It's often written as sigma is equal to mass divided by area, which is a perfectly valid equation so long as sigma is constant. So long as one point on this piece of paper uh, is not heavier than another point on the piece of paper. Notice that technically what we're doing here is performing a double integral. We're performing an integration with respect to x and an integration with respect to y. Some of you may have seen this in uh, a multivariable multi calculus. If you haven't seen double or triple integrals, don't worry. We won't be using too many of them in this class. The important result is ultimately that the mass is equal to sigma times a. You could also have a three-dimensional mass distribution, like this cube, something that has a length and a width and a height. In that case, the mass of the cube is equal to the integral of rho dv. This is Greek letter rho, and it denotes volume mass density in kilograms per cubic meter. This volume integral is actually a triple integral. It involves integration along the length and the width and the height of the object, so you're integrating with respect to three variables. If rho is constant, if the mass density is uniform, if it's the same at every point inside this object, then we can bring it out of the integral, and this triple integral simply just gives you the volume of whatever object you're dealing with, and so the mass of the object is equal to rho times v. This formula also is often written a little bit differently. People often define density as mass divided by volume, which is a perfectly fine formula so long as the density, this volume mass density rho, is uniform or constant throughout the object. To better understand mass density, let's do a practice problem. A metallic rod has a length of 25 centimeters. The rod has a uniform length mass density of 0.45 kilograms per meter. Calculate the mass of the rod. Before you do any calculations, notice that some of the units provided here are SI units and some are not SI units. 
The kilogram provided here is an SI unit. The meter here is an SI unit. However, the centimeter here is not an SI unit. So you should be prepared to do a conversion um, at some point during the course of your calculations. You should know off the top of your head that there are 100 centimeters to one meter. So you should be able to do uh, a conversion using this conversion factor here. Now also note that you are told the length, the length mass density is uniform. So uniform in this context means that the length mass density is constant. And what that means is that you don't have to do any of those nasty integrals that we were discussing on the previous slide. Here you can just use the easy formula. The mass of the rod is equal to the length mass density times the length of the rod. The length mass density lambda is given to you as 0.45 kilograms per meter. What that means is that if you had a meter long rod, its mass would be 0.45 kilograms. We're going to multiply that by 25 centimeters, but of course, after conversion, 25 centimeters becomes 0.25 meters. You want to be using SI units in these calculations. And now you can just plug this into your calculator and you will find that the mass of this 25 centimeter long rod is 0.1125 kilograms. That's a relatively straightforward calculation. Let's do one that's a little more tricky. A metallic rod has a length of 25 centimeters just as before, but this time the rod's length mass density is not uniform. It is given by this formula shown here. So lambda is the length mass density. In part A, it was constant at 0.45, but now it's not a constant anymore. It's 0.45 plus 2x, where x is basically position or length along the, the rod. Calculate the mass density, calculate the mass of this rod. Notice this is a rod that starts with a mass density of 0.45, but as you go to the other end of the rod, as x increases, lambda increases. So this is a rod whose density is increasing from one end to the other. Now we have no choice but to do an integral. The mass is equal to the integral of lambda dx. Be careful with the limits of integration. I want to integrate along the length of the rod. The rod extends from 0 to 0.25 meters or 25 centimeters. Lambda is given to me as 2x plus 0.45. So I'm going to plug that in. You should be comfortable enough doing an integral like this where lambda is basically 2x plus 0.45. You can use something like the power rule to integrate this. And when you integrate it, you'll find that it's x squared plus 0.45x. Don't forget the limits of integration. We want to plug in these limits of integration. And when we do, we find that the mass of the rod is 0.175 kilograms. For this class on our exams, I will not be asking you to do double integrals or triple integrals, but I will be asking you to do single integrals of polynomials. I think that's a relatively easy mathematical skill that you should have, assuming you have completed Calculus 1. And that's the end of this lecture. Thank you for your attention.